There are grim chapters of the history unknown to you, where anguish and torment held sway. In ancient China, the methods of punishment and torture were extraordinarily harsh and aimed at inflicting severe physical pain and psychological torment upon both the convicted individuals and those witnessing the punishments. Among the punitive practices were tattooing, foot amputation, castration, and even the horrifying possibilities of being subjected to grilling or boiling alive. Get ready to cringe, wince, and maybe even shed a tear for our unfortunate ancestors who endured some seriously bizarre and painful punishments. A span of 2,000 years ago, Han Fei and Li Si played significant roles in introducing a philosophical and political doctrine known as legalism in China. This ideology emphasized strict adherence to the law, with severe repercussions for those who violated it. A range of punishments awaited those found guilty of transgressions, and these practices were observed by Westerners who visited China during the 17th century. Let's start with a story of poor Yuan. September 1630 marked a tragic turn of events for Yuan Chonghuan during the Ming Dynasty. His once esteemed military reputation was tarnished when he failed to repel a Jurchen invasion at Shanghai Pass in Hebei province. To make matters worse, he was unjustly accused of collusion with the enemy. Despite a lack of substantial evidence, Yuan was hastily declared guilty by the Ming state and sentenced to a horrifying punishment, death by Lingqi, also known as slow slicing. In the presence of a large crowd at Ganshichiao in Beijing, an executioner initiated the excruciating process, slowly cutting and slicing Yuan's body while ensuring he remained alive. This macabre spectacle continued for half a day, subjecting Yuan to hundreds of torturous cuts. Ming historian Ji Liuqi's account in Northern Affairs of the Late Ming documents the appalling scene. Once Yuan finally succumbed to the agony, local residents, harboring deep resentment towards him, gathered his dismembered remains, so consumed by hatred that some reportedly expressed a desire to consume his flesh. This excruciating sentence was particularly designed to keep the victim's vital organs functioning throughout the process, prolonging their agony. The number of cuts inflicted varied from 8 to a staggering 120, depending on the severity of the crime committed. Another punishment included tattooing, which was considered the mildest among them. Criminals found guilty of offenses would receive indelible markings on their faces or other prominent parts of their bodies. These tattoos served as enduring reminders of their wrongdoings or indicated the site of their punishment, such as an exile or a labor camp. The lasting and conspicuous nature of these tattoos branded the individuals as former criminals, leaving an indelible mark on their lives for all to see. Following tattooing, the next punishment was rhinotomy, which involved cutting off the criminal's nose. Yes, you heard it right. Asterisk. Imagine looking like Lord Voldemort for the rest of your life just because you committed a crime. Asterisk. Well, similar to tattooing, this cruel practice inflicted permanent scars on the individual. However, due to the involvement of blades and bloodletting, rhinotomy and the subsequent two penalties often led to fatal infections, making them extremely perilous. Moving up the hierarchy of punishments was Yue, a penalty with varying degrees of severity depending on the historical period. The specific foot to be amputated was chosen based on the gravity of the crimes committed, the right foot for the most serious offenses, and the left for less severe transgressions. But yes, for minor offenses, such as falling asleep on night watch. This involved striking the soles of the feet with a stick, rod, or club, typically delivering around 20 lashes. I wonder how people in those ancient times would react after receiving 20 whips on their feet. Thank God there was only whipping involved and no amputating. Well, interesting part is, this practice was viewed as a well-intentioned, fatherly correction for those who committed petty crimes. Even high-ranking officials and prominent individuals faced the possibility of being subjected to bastinado as a disciplinary measure. Chinese emperors sometimes employed this method to chastise great persons and unruly public officials. The next punishment in the list, known as gong, was an incredibly severe measure involving the permanent removal of a person's reproductive capabilities. For males, this meant castration, an irreversible and harrowing procedure. A well-known figure to suffer this fate was Sima Qian, 
145 BC, 86 BC, a notable historian whose legacy remains as the father of traditional Chinese historiography. In the case of female victims, gong punishments could involve a distressing process where their abdomen was subjected to forceful pounding with a stout stick, aiming to induce damage to their reproductive organs, particularly the womb. Talk about dedication to crime prevention. Or don't. You'd have thought we'd been done by now. But here's another one. The wooden collar, known as a kang by the Portuguese, emerges as a distinctive and rather oriental penalty, if you will. This formidable apparatus consisted of a large wooden square, sometimes weighing up to 200 pounds, cleverly crafted in two pieces with a center cut out. Once imposed upon the individual, presumably a criminal, they would be required to place their head through the center, and then the two pieces would be fastened together with leather straps. The Kang effectively rendered the person unable to see their body or touch their face, making even simple tasks like eating an arduous challenge. In some cases, the Kangs were so weighty that the individual could not remain upright, leading them to either sit down or require additional support to stay braced. Unsurprisingly, this Chinese punishment was carried out publicly, serving as a stern and public admonition for both the wrongdoer and the onlookers. I mean, what else is left there except death? The final of the painful punishments was death. You're the end. But the methods of execution were varied, each devised to inflict maximum pain and suffering on the condemned and instill fear in others. These methods ranged from strangulation and decapitation to unimaginably gruesome practices such as boiling or grilling a person alive and even turning their flesh into mincemeat and salting it. Strangulation, decapitation, boiling and grilling. It's like they were trying to come up with the most creative ways to bid farewell. And if that wasn't enough, they even turned people into literal mincemeat, taking a recipe for disaster to a whole new level. Seriously, though, these punishments were no laughing matter, and the rulers meant business. So let's just be grateful we're living in a time where consequences are a bit less, well, medieval. But wouldn't you want to know when all of this came to an end? Fortunately, with the arrival of the early Han period in the early 2nd century BC, Chinese society underwent significant changes. Rulers recognized the need to replace these barbaric punishments with a more humane system. Thus, the new punishments emerged and evolved over the centuries. These included whipping, flogging, hard labor, exile, and capital punishment, with death still being the ultimate consequence, but at least they dropped the theatrics. Means, the excessively cruel and unusual methods of execution were abandoned, marking a more enlightened approach to justice. While some older punishments, like tattooing, persisted until the early 20th century, they became increasingly infrequent over time. Punishments, such as rhinotomy and yue, disappeared altogether, reflecting a shift towards a more compassionate and just society in China's historical development. The severity of these punishments underscores the ruthless nature of the ancient Chinese legal system, where the pursuit of justice sometimes resulted in tragic and deadly consequences for the convicted individuals. The cruelty was intentional, designed to not only punish the wrongdoer, but also to torment their families and serve as a deterrent to potential criminals. Let's hope we've learned from history and keep evolving to a kinder and more compassionate world. Cheers to leaving the gruesome past behind. If you enjoyed this content, consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Much appreciated.